Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss importing IFC files into Strap software and converting them to an analytical model using AutoStrap. We will start with an example. Here we have a two-story concrete building model. Let's convert it into an analytical model in Strap. First of all, we will export the IFC model by clicking on File, Export, IFC. After clicking on Browse, choose the File Folder destination and keep the default setting as Current Selected Setup while making sure the IFC version is IFC 2x3 or IFC 4, which are the latest IFC versions. Then, export the file. Now let's open AutoStrap and import the IFC file by clicking on File Import IFC file and selecting the saved IFC file. After selecting the saved IFC file, the IFC model editor will open up. Here we can make changes and adjust the IFC model before converting it to a strap model. In the top toolbar, the zoom window button gives us the option to enlarge an area selected by the user. Full drawing centers us on the full model. Scrolling forward and backward with a mouse wheel zooms in and out accordingly. Double clicking on the mouse wheel centers us on the full model, similar to the full drawing option. Move window center centers our view on a selected point on the screen by left clicking on it. Limit display by coordinates gives us the option to limit our model's display by defining minimum and maximum coordinate values. The coordinate system located at the bottom right corner of the screen will show us the positive coordinate directions in relation to our perspective. It will help us determine our points of reference. For example, let's say we want to make a section in the middle of the structure and display only the right side of the building. We will press the button, select minimum x2 limit, and pick the middle point. By doing so, we will restrict the display of elements after the minimum point. Furthermore, we can limit our display by choosing planes. I will press the level button on the left and select the first floor. This way, I will limit my display to coordinates larger than the selected level. Alternate three views changes our perspective between three predefined views. Here we can rotate the building 90 degrees about the horizontal axis vertical axis, and the axis perpendicular to our screen. Display or undisplay elements present our display options. Here we have our elements display options window in which we can toggle on or off the display of beams, slabs, walls, connection plates, removed elements, and levels. And here are shortcuts for all display options. Beams, slabs, walls, connection plates, 
removed elements, and levels. In the menu on the right, clicking on Remove allows us to remove elements. For instance, if I wish to delete this column, I will click on Remove Individual Elements and select the desired column. The Convert option allows us to convert element types from one to another, which is useful after removing some elements accidentally. Let's say that a column was removed by accident. We will press on Display Removed Elements and bring it back by pressing on Convert. And selecting the removed column. Be aware that beams and columns are referred to as beam elements in the program. As a result, the Display Beams option will control the display of columns and the Convert to Beam option will also affect columns. Clicking on Parameters opens our Model Setup window. Here we can find some useful options. Connect two beams if the distance between them is smaller than what is defined. Sometimes, after creating the strap model from an IFC file, beam ends could be very close to one another, but not connected. Here, we can define a maximal distance at which beam ends will be connected to each other. We will demonstrate this option later on a steel frame. Assign two slabs to the same level if their level difference is smaller than what is defined. If a slab has a defined level, and there are slabs within the defined range, those unassigned slabs will be assigned. Ignore slabs between levels defined in an IFC file. When there are slabs without a defined level, between slabs with a defined level, the landing would not be taken into account. Ignore levels defined in IFC file. Picking this option will ignore the defined levels from the IFC file and create levels for existing slabs. By not using this option, the levels would be defined and named according to the levels specified in the IFC file. Reduce offset usage as much as possible. This option reduces offset usage in the strap model. Please note that choosing this option can change the angles of the elements in the structure. You can only use this option if neither levels nor ignore levels have been defined in the model. You can choose to use the original IFC file units defined in Revit or set the desired units here. Clicking on Levels will open the Levels menu. This menu displays the number of levels, their names, and their coordinates. It is imperative to understand that the structural components coordinates are defined in Revit software. We can define a level based on a coordinate. After defining a level, the program will check to see if there are any slabs located on the specified level. If there is a slab, mesh elements will be created in the strap model. Therefore, we will want to define levels using slab coordinates. We can define a level by clicking on Insert. We can name the level. If we do not, the level coordinates will be assigned to its name. We can define the level height by entering the level coordinates, choosing a point, or picking a face. By selecting a level and pressing Remove, we will delete the specified level. Once the level has been defined, we will move on to the AutoStrap program by clicking on Continue. There, we can inspect the level assignment, define model parameters, 
and set loads. So let's click on continue and open the Autostrap program. You can see on the right all the defined story levels. A level was defined for the ground floor which contains no slabs. Therefore, we can see that no mesh elements were created on this level. We can return to the IFC model by clicking on IFC view. We will ensure the levels are defined as required and press the strap button to create the strap model. Here we can see the created model. In our next example, we will focus on a steel structure. Unlike a concrete structure, it is not recommended to define levels in a steel structure. Defining levels in a steel structure will often disrupt the model import, remove elements, and create offsets. We will click on the Levels button to make sure we don't have defined levels. Please note that if we want to define mesh elements, beams, columns, or walls, we will define them in Strap after creating the model. And now, we will click on Continue to import the model. Please note that unlike the concrete model, the software will directly create the Strap model without navigating through AutoStrap. This is because we didn't define levels in the IFC editing area. We will press OK, save the model, and open it in Strap. We can see that the created strap model is similar to the IFC model. The beam types assigned in the model are similar to the beam types defined in Revit. We can see that on the upper part of the building there are three beams that are not connected to each other. This problem can be addressed in several ways. First, the model can be edited within the strap software by moving the end beams nodes toward the central node by clicking on the move button and selecting the nodes. In addition, it is possible to solve this problem in the IFC model editing area using an exclusive feature which we will demonstrate now. Let's return to the IFC model editing area Click on the parameters and mark the first line. Connect two beams if distance between them is smaller than what is defined. This option gives us the possibility to connect the ends of beams if the distance between them is smaller than the distance defined in the box. In order to determine what distance we should place here, we will return to the strap model and measure the distance between the nodes. We will measure the distance using the Display Data for Node option. Let's click on it and start with a left diagonal beam. We can see that the distance between the left beam and our central node is 0.1271 meters. The distance between the end of the central beam and the central node is 0.1271 meters. And the distance between the central node and the right beam is 0.1271. You can see that the maximum distance is 12.71 centimeters. We will enter 15 centimeters to be on the safe side and click OK. Let's exit strap. and click Continue. The software will inform us that we have made changes to the model and ask us if we want to replace it. Press Yes and select Override Existing Model in order to replace the model 
and click OK. Now we will return to Strap and see that all beam end nodes have been connected to the central node. There is a difference between the diagonal beam and the middle beam connection. As soon as the software detects that the beam's axis passes through the central node, the beam will be extended and connected to the central node. But as soon as the software detects that the beam's axis does not pass through the central node, the beams will be extended on their axes. They will be extended until the point where the beams are perpendicular at 90 degrees to the node and then connected to the node with offset while maintaining the beam angle. To delete the offsets, we will navigate to Beams, Offset, Delete Beam Offset, and cancel the offset by selecting both beams. Note that as soon as we cancel the offset, the angle of the beams changes. In addition, we can reduce the use of offsets and remove them using a feature in the IFC model editing area. Let's return to the IFC model editing area by clicking on IFC view. We will click on Parameters, mark the option Reduce Offset Usage, and click OK. Now we will exit Strap Press on the Continue button and pick Override Existing Model and click OK. As soon as we enter Strap, we will see that there are no offsets in the model. What the software actually did was to connect the beams to the central node and eliminate the offsets and the diagonal beams. It is imperative to understand that as a result, the beam angles have changed. We should use the connect to beams if distance command with caution because there can be areas in the building where there are beams with a smaller distance between them than the distance defined here. They will be connected to each other despite our will. Let's suppose we set a certain distance here to connect certain beams. We still have to make sure that there are no other beams in the structure at a distance smaller than the defined distance because otherwise unwanted connections will be made between beams in the model. In addition, we must also be cautious about the Reduce Offset Usage command. Usually, we will want to create the model without this option, and then for comparison, we can choose this option and see that the software cancels the desired offsets without harming our required offsets. Thank you very much for watching.